I'm Peter Brown from Tiny and Sons Glass. Tiny and Sons Glass was established in 1978 when my father and brother and I were at 575 Washington Street in Pembroke. We're certified and qualified to do all your windshield replacement and repair. Tiny and Sons Glass is a community-based business. We have 12 mobile vans that come to you. If the weather's bad, you can come here to the shop. We have a nice waiting area, TV, Wi-Fi, kid-friendly, pet-friendly. We also can move about 15, 20 cars a day through the shop. Perfect for you when the weather's bad. So come on down to Tiny and Sons Glass if you need your windshield replaced or repaired. Tiny and Sons Glass, 1-888-64-TINYS. Just call. Thank you. All right, we're at 745, so I'm going to reopen the public hearing for proposed site plan SP3-17 at 346 Washington Street for operation of Smith & Sons, a company engaged in destruction, excavating, and mulch processing and sale, including two new buildings of 22,800 square feet. And this public hearing is being continued from December 18, 2017, January 22, 2018, and February 5, 2018. All right. So can we are assembled. Uh, we thought, yeah, we should be there any minute. Okay. Second. So we're waiting for Attorney Galvin. Um, the chair couldn't be with us tonight. She had a conflicting uh, meeting. But she did want us to um, put her comments into the record. So I can start with that. Unless we want to start with Attorney Galvin. Oh. Sorry, I'm a few minutes late. We have reviewed the additional information that's been given to the board um, between the last meeting and this meeting. It doesn't seem that there's anything materially new here or different from what we've reviewed at the last three meetings. Um, but if you wanted to address some of those issues. I haven't seen any of the new letters okay. that came in. Um, I did send over a letter earlier today with a couple of former decisions of the board. Yeah, I was able to give them copies. Uh, okay. So, um, yeah, we, we received those. I right, brought extra ones. And what was the address of that? that? It's right next door. Um, it's on the other side of the river. So just to the left off the plant. Okay. There was a parcel over there. And there was a... So that was approved but never built? Right. Okay. Uh, there was site plan approval and zoning to be granted. Other than that, we have too much more than that. Okay. Good. I would like to see the other letters that came in. I can get the copies. What? I have copies here. Okay. Well, well, I, well, there's a couple of things yeah. that we received. Um, one was a memo from the fire department, which would help us with some of the other additions, should we approve this, uh, with some findings from the fire department, which looks good. Um, then there's a letter from Mr. Norman with some additional requests for conditions, possible condi conditions that we could add to this. Uh, the memo from Ms. Coletta. We have a memo from an abutter who um, is just addressing some concerns, most of which we've already addressed in previous meetings. And then some concerns on air pollution um, that we've also addressed in previous meetings pretty exhaustively. Um, right, then we have nothing further to add. Okay, good. So let me read the memo from uh, Chair Coletta into the record. And then we can continue. <coughs> so, dear fellow members of the planning board, I write this memo because I'm unable to attend our meeting tonight as I'm attending an event with my husband. I have attended all the public hearings on this matter and reviewed the submitted materials. I also attended the site walk of 346 Washington Street as well as the operation of Smith & Smith and Sons in Marshfield. At present, after hearing and considering all the information submitted to the board, if I were attended tonight, I would be voting in favor of the site plan <coughs> with the significant conditions to which the applicant has agreed. We can set conditions at our next meeting, but I would expect these to include no wood, gr one, no wood grinding operations after the cleanup is complete, Two, restrictions on hours, days of operation during cleanup of the site and following cleanup of the site. Three, restricting site to one loam screener. Four, requiring the company vehicles be equipped with smart white noise backup alarms. 
5, prohibiting company vehicles from using Pleasant Street as a path to and from the site, and 6, compliance with all fire code requirements. While the application has presented some difficult issues, I believe applicant has agreed to conditions that would prevent his operation from being noisy, injurious, noxious, or offensive to the neighborhood in light of other uses in the area and the permitted uses under the zoning bylaws. I hear that the abutters remain concerned that the actual <coughs> operation may ignore these conditions and be operated as a nuisance. I do not believe our decision should assume that the operation will be operated illegally. Any applicant can operate illegally, but other enforcement mechanisms exist to enforce the site plan conditions. On its face, I do not see that this use would be noxious or offensive to neighbors, as the current operation has existed in the center of town without such claims and with neighbors in closer proximity. I would add that during my visit to the site in Marshfield, I did not observe any offensive smells from the mulch piles. In addition, applicant is willing to accept more stringent conditions than exist in writing for his current site of operations. I understand that the board may be presented with new information tonight and that my opinion has no binding effect on the board's decision. Nonetheless, I wanted to leave the board with my thoughts leading to tonight's meeting. So we'll enter that into the record. Any other comments from the board before we proceed? What? I'm going to make a motion to approve uh, site plan SP3-17 um, with conditions that are uh, that there will no wood grinding would exist on the site after the cleanup is complete, um, that there are restrictions on the hours and days of operation during the cleanup of the site and following the cleanup of the site. Um, I know there were some hours that were suggested, but I don't remember what they well, were. We can hammer those out when we like right. conditions. Um, restricting use of one to the site of one loam screamer screener, requiring that the company vehicles be to be equipped with a smart white noise backup alarms. Um, also prohibiting company vehicles from using Pleasant Street as a path to or from the site and that they comply with all fire code requirements. All right. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Any any discussion? Well, it used to be a large amount of people here this evening for a regular approval process. Um, well, I, I will point I out. I support Mr. the motion well, in the second, but that usually opens up the floor for debate. It does, but let me just explain, Mr. Van Riper, that we've had this is our fourth public hearing. I understand. And that. we've had a lot of these people get to speak before the board mm -hmm. in the two previous meetings. Mm -hmm. I understand. That. But I'm just saying a motion's been made and seconded, and by procedure we are not, we should not take an instant vote unless, do anybody I imagine some folks here might have an, an opinion to offer we're the board. Vote. This is well, like to know what, well not before we do that, because uh, this is board business, mm -hmm. um, if you would like, I will take some questions, but I want to keep it brief. Yeah, because we've been through a lot of this already before. If you want to put a limitation on time, Mr. I Chairman, would like to put a limitation of ten minutes on time. Mm -hmm. All right. <coughs> Thank you. And please address your questions to me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Question. Yes. Uh, and identify uh, yourself as your oh, Maureen Robinson, thirty-one Pleasant Street. Um, can you tell us what the conditions are that you're approving for in? Um, I just read them. No, time wise. You didn't say for time wise. What hours of operation? Yes. Okay. Um, I believe it was. We had that. You guys had given us the hours of operation in the last meeting, correct? Yes, and I'll, I'll find my letter. Okay. I believe they're asking from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m., if I recall. With limited time for any. Um, <coughs> loan screen. Monday, well, Monday to Friday, 7.30 to 4.30 p.m. Okay. Um, that was the regular business hours. Uh, but, and we would sell screen. Then we gave an attachment with some limited dates around holidays. Right. That we wouldn't. Um, regular business hours of the property, 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. Monday to Friday, 7.30 to 4.30 on Saturdays. Pick up the deliveries only on Sundays and holidays. Correct, and there was going to be no uh, screening done on weekends and holidays. No screening on weekends <laughs> or holidays. Okay. So well, those are the hours or after holiday. Okay. As well. Right. 
six o'clock for me I, is a little bit too, I, yeah, too I, early. I was going to say is I think that's that, not for screening, it's just for hours of operation. I understand <laughs> that, but contractors came to them sat at six o'clock in the morning. Yeah, I understand that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 I mean, they cancel office hours. Do we have any? Well, it's truck, uh, I think it's truck traffic is what the, is what the, the uh, residents are talking about. I th I, frankly, I think truck traffic should probably be limited to 7 o'clock in the morning. I mean, all this operation to show up to there to do that, the tr as far as truck <coughs> movement in and out. Uh, I would think seven to I would think even seven to six thirty or seven o'clock at night, not eight o'clock at night. Okay. It seems kind of I understand that, you know, it is on a busy busy part of the road, but so does the board agree and would we like to add that to the condition? And would that be workable for you? Um I guess for for having the storefront open, um Sometimes in the, in the morning to get to get out, you know, on like the construct the excavating side, and get some of those guys out early in the morning. Um, it, it might be nice to get out a little bit earlier than seven mm -hmm. uh, with the Route Three traffic and stuff. But as far as selling to the public, um, seven is acceptable. Cool. Can I can I ask you about Sundays also? Sundays, what, what's the hour of Sundays? Just pick up and deliveries. Yeah. So if someone could come in and buy some mulch for some loan on Sunday or a holiday. People that work around the yard, that's who you'd be selling. Right, to the home owner, the general public. That would be out in the front near Washington Street? Yes. Near where the pins are? Sure. I know. And so that would be what time? Seven? Seven thirty to four thirty. And it's a very limited period in the spring and fall when we are open Sundays for, mm -hmm. for, for retail business. And what time? Maureen, 7.30 to 4.30, Pop? Yes. Yep. 7.30 to 4.30. Additional questions? Yes, if I <coughs> Matthew Watsky here is counsel for the abutters. Uh, we got Karis and uh, uh, her partner. Uh, I understand the planning board um, isn't in a position to rule on, on the legality of the compliance with the zoning code. We'll leave that to the building inspector and the ZBA. A few points to make. We have a huge amount of debris that's there and it got there illegally. And the neighbors all suffered while that was going on. There's going to be a huge amount of noise that's going to be generated when you excavate that out and grind it up. And there's going to be additional noise then just in the operation of this facility. Um, you have an area of wetlands in the center of this property that's now been identified by Beals and Thomas, January 24, 2018. I assume that's part of the record. Uh, that area of wetlands may not be jurisdictional by the Conservation Commission, but it certainly appears jurisdictional by the DEP under the Water Quality Certification and the Army Corps of Engineers. Um, and um, I'd like to just touch base real quickly on the significance on each of those things. So the noise. When I, when I left, last was here and at the site visit, there was a discussion of having a noise expert design a berm and do the grinding so that it was carefully monitored, designed, and would be guaranteed by a noise expert not to affect the neighbors. The applicant, perhaps in the, well, uh, uh, whatever the motive, the applicant has taken that off the table and now proposes to actually grind all of the debris that's on site um, and process it on site. And that's exactly what the cotton tree case says is not agricultural use. But really, we'll just talk about impact. The same people who suffered from the illegal use that was going on there for so many years and the illegal hauling in of this waste and the dumping and burying of it and using the place as a landfill are now the same people who the applicant proposes to have suffer from the sound for one year or two years, the sound of the grinding, without any noise expert to say, how are we going to attenuate that noise? You're going to just have to suffer with it so that the best applicant possible to take this site, that's probably true, he gets to turn it into a product 
and he'll use it for his business, but it, it's the guy who took the title to the property by foreclosure, I understand, who's now got a profit by giving Smith & Sons the ability to grind this stuff and have the neighbors suffer from the noise generated by that grinding without any attenuation of it. That frankly doesn't seem to me to be fair and it's certainly not consistent with the site plan approval standards that you've got in your bylaw. Um, they're going to have to put up with this for however long it takes for Smith & Sons to clean up the mess that the other guy left and that's going to take a lot of noise and a lot of effort that would be decreased either by not grinding the stuff on site or by having a really competent noise expert design the thing so that you can you can stick the grinder perhaps in a central location on the property behind a well-designed barrier that blocks the sound from from, from being uh, uh, dis, uh, dispersed um, emitted from from that grinder and and protect the people who shouldn't have to suffer from this stuff. that's my first point Next point, you are going to have, and as I understand it, Attorney Galvin acknowledged that there'd be a 5 dBA to a 10 dBA uh, level of noise emitted from the site long term going out into the neighbor's property. That might meet the DEP standard, the statewide standard for what doesn't constitute a nuisance because more than 10 dBA is automatically considered a nuisance, but your bylaw sets a higher standard than that. And your site plan approval standards require a better, a higher, for more protective standard than that. Your standard built into the uh, Section 5 and then uh, set, uh, it's, uh, Roman numeral 5, Section 6, is that no building structure, premises, or land shall be used except in conformance with the following as no noise, vibration, or flashing that's normally perceptible without instruments above street noise at the neighbor's property. So if you've got 5 dBA to 10 dBA noise coming off of this property, that's, that's perceptible to people in, in their normal use and enjoyment of their residential property. That's inconsistent with the site plan approval standards and it's inconsistent with the impact standards set in the bylaw. He can do better. This site can be designed better than they're choosing not to do noise attenuation. They're choosing not to do a study. They're choosing not to put up a noise barrier. Next item. The fact that there's a federally recognized wetland, I would expect that Army Corps is going to be interested because I, mean, I just walked around and it looked wet to me and it wasn't any great surprise that Bills and Thomas identified it. It looked to be about an acre. Army Corps engineers jumps on something like that, as does MassDEP. They require you to demonstrate that there's absolutely no alternative means to develop your site without filling in that isolated, well, what's now apparently isolated vegetated wetland. And I'll tell you one of the criteria that the Army Corps of Engineers uses, assuming you get past the alternatives analysis, they don't care if you're providing wetlands compensation, wetlands mitigation that's consistent with uh, some other rule. They'll have you pay a mitigation fee. I would guess mitigation fee for uh, for an acre is going to be something between a quarter and a half a million dollars. So choose to develop it, fill it, sort of at your own risk. Um, but from the planning board's perspective, the significance of that area is that that's smack in the middle of the area that they have designed as their material handling area that's going to be paved, or they propose to have it paved and all the equipment would be moving around and processing the, 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 wood, the wood mulch and moving it around. And the stormwater management facilities on the site are designed to have flow go across that surface. If you can't fill it, you can't regrade it, then you can't have your stormwater going through it. So the entire stormwater management calculations that they've done just blow up. Okay. So, those, so, so, those, so that, that is that the final question. Oh, I have I have other things that I could get into but, because maybe it'd be helpful to have 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 your questions answered because I'd this, be glad to have them this answer. site has yeah. gone through extensive engineering review. The, Mr. Chairman, I remind you we have a ten minute debate. We do, and we're up with the ten minutes. So, I'll allow people here who can answer his questions to attempt to answer the questions first, and then we'll go to the board. 
just very briefly on the five to ten decibel thing. We're not proposing a constant five to ten decibel increase in sound. The five to ten decibel contextually was trucks and equipment have a beeper on them, which provide a can provide a decibel level that's in excess of ten decibels. This smart technology that we intended to install on all of our equipment would have a automatic adjustment, adjustment which would reduce it down to five to ten. When a truck passes the Karras property on Pember, in, in, on uh, Route 53, it, it probably goes up by 30 or 40 decibels as the truck passes by. There'll be less noise from this site with those type of attenuation features than there would be when a truck, an ordinary truck passes. So um, it, the entire reason for eliminating the grinding was because the cost to mitigate was so extraordinary that we couldn't do it. No matter who goes in there, the site has to be cleaned up. No matter who goes in there, in all likelihood, they're going to have to do the same type of activities that we have to do to make the property useful. Well, in terms of the Army Corps of Engineers, um, it's not located in the processing area. This wet area is located in the pavement, proposed pavement. Uh, we have an active conservation commission uh, filing right now. Uh, we expect to be able to deal with that issue as a part of our CONCOM file. So I don't know that I can add any more than that. Okay. Anything else from the board? Mm -hmm. All right. Yep. Okay. All right, we've got a motion to accept mm -hmm. the site plan with conditions on the table. Um, and we will take into consideration the hours of operation when we write the conditions. Mm -hmm. All right. So all those in favor of approving the site plan? <coughs> Say aye. 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 I'm going to abstain. Okay. <laughs> All right, so it, it passes. None opposed. One abstention. Are we going to close the public hearing at this point? Continue? We should close the public hearing. I'll make, a, <laughs> I'll make a motion we close the public hearing. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. All right, all those in favor of closing the public hearing, please say aye. 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 Hi. Okay, we're done. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much.